we're recording. Do you agree, Doug, that with Judith Butler's theory that gender is performative? Okay. Judith Butler's, uh, Judith, Judith Butler's theory about gender being performed, <coughs> I think is a really valuable theory to take into account. And I think it's part of that nature-nurture debate, which is not really a debate. I, I don't think anything's one thing or another like that. I think it gets a bit daft when people s make something like this is how it is, because there's definitely a lot of truth in that. But I don't think it's the whole thing. And I, I can't claim to understand genetics or how something's passed down in that way, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if anybody really knows. Really, I think we guess a lot about that kind of thing. <clears throat> but I do think there's a lot of evidence to show that people learn how to be a man or a woman in a conventional sense in our society through a set of signifiers. So, like you do your eye thing and your eyebrow thing, and I mean, that's quite a recent invention, you know, the, especially the eyebrow girly thing that goes on at the moment. I mean, five years ago, that didn't exist. So it's like, well, well where does that come from? And it probably comes from my most hated program in the world, which is Take Me Out, where you end up with a row of identikit girlies waiting to press their buttons to <coughs> eject some hapless lad, try to impress them. Everybody's trying to impress each other. But they try to impress each other by performing a thing that they think will make them attractive rather than being themselves or being willing to take a stand. I, I find that really worrying. So I think it's also like a lot of reality TV becomes so kind of, or, you know, Hollyoaks and all that kind of stuff is very it's sort of bubblegum telly that's just looking at pretty people being daft with a bit of ritualistic humiliation thrown in I mean we've really saturated on that over the last 10 or 15 years and I think a lot of that has added to stereotypes of, of performed gender and it kind of keeps turning the volume up so that Essex look that you get now everything's just getting bigger and oranger and more bling and more stuff and you know you, you get to a point where you start to look at the transvestite scene which has always been like that because it's a sort of an overly sexualized sort of satirical caricature of femininity where everything gets turned up but then now you put a transvestite next to an Essex girl the difference is is not that great anymore I mean that's quite recent I think and I think that's definitely something to do with gender being performed and the other side of that as well is that I I went past the club in Brighton a, a year or so ago. I was saying to her, mate, is that a gay club? She was like, don't think so. I'm like, but all those blokes, there's all blokes there, all of their top button done up and kind of super manicured hair. And I'm like, but the music's really rubbish. You don't usually get rubbish music in a gay club. She was like, no, that's not a gay club. That's the Thai scene. I'm like, what do you mean? That's, just, that's a thing now that there's loads of blokes go out and do that metrosexual thing they used to call it didn't they where it's like suddenly straight blokes are allowed to do their nails and you know get all finickety with their stuff and it's like wow that <coughs> you get this kind of hyper reality loop of reality tv copies reality but it inflates it and blows it up and then reality copies that and then the tv copies that and you get this kind of loop that just magnifies itself, which is, I, I, I don't, I can't think of it as great, I must admit. That was a long answer to a short question. What do you think on, on the idea of the third sex? Of what, Lavi? Of the third sex. The third sex? What does that mean? So, you're not male, you're not female, you're, you're yeah. you don't know. There was a girl, she, she stated that, um, she feels that there's another gender, and it's n uh, not either male or female. She feels that you can feel that you're both. What do you believe on? Uh, what do you? What would you understand on that concept? Well, look, we live in a society that is very obsessed with dualities, in which is a kind of a very Christian mindset. So, 
a Christi the Christian paradigm that we've brought up in is you're either a good girl or you're a bad girl. You're a good boy or a bad boy. You either make it permanently to a permanently lovely realm or you you know, relegated permanently forever to, you know, awful place. I mean, I don't want to diss anybody's religion. I don't, I don't think that's how it is, personally. I don't think it's about a physical, permanent realm like that. But that whole duality thing really, really permeates our society, whether you believe it or not. So we have two models, a male model and a female model, and in theory, you're meant to get together with a member of the opposite, or complementary, you could think of it as sex, and have some kids and live happily ever together in your, you know, 2.2 family. I mean, I think that model's gone. And I think people are realising that more and more. If you live somewhere like Brighton, where sexuality is a f fluid thing, where being gay, bi or straight aren't the only options, you know, people don't just fit into really simple slots. And I think that kind of need to simplify things is very lazy. I think somewhere like Brighton is a place where it's more complicated than that, things are more subtle than that, things are more fluid than that. So do I think there's a third sex? I, I don't really know, but I definitely don't think that human beings fit into one of two models in general about anything. I think that, that oversimplification has had its day. Yeah. Do you think that gender is fixed? Shout out for my deaf ears. Do you think that gender is fixed? But well, do I think that gender is fixed? It, it appears to be the case that, I mean this is generalisation and I don't know, most people seem to know what gender they feel, whether, they're, whether they feel the gender that they are or they feel the gender that they're not, people seem to be pretty certain so even in an age where transitioning is relatively relatively straightforward and affordable i don't seem to come across many people who go i don't know i can't decide people seem to either be like yeah i'm a bloke or a woman or i'm a, I was born a bloke but i need to be a woman so that's what i'm going to do and i'll sort it out and then that appears to be the end of the story but I, i've never really seen uh, interviews or documentaries about people who've transitioned 20 years later but it doesn't seem like people ever regret it I d I don't, that doesn't ever appear to be the story so whatever's going on it does seem to be the case that people seem to be relatively certain about what gender they feel whether they are that gender or not but that's not the same thing as sexuality that's a whole different ball game and I think attraction and sexuality and what fits and what doesn't and all, all that kind of stuff is really really complicated and also part of that mix as well so it is complicated but I think the simple version is that it does look like gender is performed but I somehow or other don't quite walk all the way down that road with Judith Butler's theory I think there's something else as well I don't think it's that simple So I'd have to start doing something with, just to start playing with. Yeah, no, it's good. We've been looking at um, so many different things. Gender in the media, gender in social media, how stereotypes are reinforced. Um, what else have we been looking at? Well, all of that really it all comes together but we're focusing on like um, we looked at how you learn gender um, and um, like today people say oh we fight for gender equality there's so much on like fight for gender equality around the world and everything and then there's been a few articles on um, gender being abolished like could gender ever be abolished um, and because um, they said that it's quite a um, gender is flawed, no set of social scripts will ever represent the wonderful diversity of human behaviour. Um, well, why don't you convert these things that you're telling me into a question and okay, ask so me do, it. Do you think that gender could be abolished? <coughs> well, let me give you an example of something that might 
it's slightly moving the goalposts, but it might be relevant. So we, we live in a society, Western capitalism is based around a principle, allegedly, of a meritocracy, that if you're good for something, you get rewarded for it by a certain amount of pay. If you're better at it, you get more pay. And on paper, that seems like a good idea. We know in practice that what that's ended up on is ended up in is a patriarchal, hierarchical society that has favoured men over women in terms of pay and like that. So, my daughter's chap has just got a job in a cooperative. So, a cooperative, there's not many of them left around anymore, has got a very different model of working. So, SUMA is the cooperative, and they're like a uh, health food, uh, like rice and lentils and all that kind of stuff. They buy huge amounts of it, and you can, bu you can buy it cheap, and it's, it's all healthy and hippie. But the cooperative works on this principle of everybody gets paid 30 grand a year. Everybody. There is no difference between the managers and the people in the warehouse, or the gender. And everybody starts in the warehouse and does six months in the warehouse and then whatever they turn out to be good at, which in Phil's case is design, he might end up designing stuff, but everybody still has to do a shift in the warehouse, <coughs> everybody gets paid 30 grand a year, blah blah blah. Now that is a system where gender has been abolished or even anything else. Everybody is, if, you, if you're on the payroll, you're regarded as important, significant, and everybody gets paid. I mean, that's quite interesting, isn't it, when you do that? Um, and in a way, that's kind of like the communist principle as well. Old school communism was about everybody's valuable, and you contribute your thing, and everybody's, doesn't matter whether you're a doctor or a bin man, you get, you get the same. It's not hard to work or that criteria that we put on things based on skills is kind of weird that you're just so used to it that you think it's normal well now is it the case that men are better at some things than women i actually think it is is it the case that women are better at some things than men i actually think it is but should we be paid the same and all that kind of stuff yeah i do think we should so it is complicated i mean you're kind of looking at the fabric of society now aren't you and uh, you know, I think it's I think it's tricky, but I don't think that gender should be anything to do. You know, if a man and a woman are doing the same job and they're both good at it, there shouldn't be any difference between their pay. I mean, I think that's the basics of feminism, isn't it? So, but I don't think gender can be abolished because I do think. Well, if you look at the film and TV industry, most of the directors are men most of the producers are women or a lot of the producers are women and actually although the directors look like the bloke in charge the producers in charge of the of everybody so things aren't always what they seem and <coughs> i don't really have a problem with different genders being better at one thing or another women can think about a lot of things at once blokes can't we can't think about more than two things at once and that takes practice i mean there's just you know, it, but it's kind of not okay to say that, is it? In politically correct land, that's tricky zone. But I think everybody sort of knows that. But would you say like things like, like that's a good example. What you've just said there is like there is clear evidence that. Um, there is a difference between the sexes and like, the biological, I don't know, makeup of your brain. Or the makeup. Mm. But the actual social, um, um, like constructions to gender, like, do you think they can be a <coughs> they can be abolished? That women can't do this because of their gender. Men okay, well, let me get into another contentious ground then. <coughs> so. I've got a house in Hebden Bridge up north, <coughs> and I live in Brighton. Um, Hebden Bridge up north is known as one of the epicentres of the lesbian community on the planet. Brighton is known as one of the gay 
is allegedly the gay capital of Europe. So the, my two home zones are renowned for very significant gay communities. So then let's look at this cliche of like, in a same sex relationship, is it okay to say, I'm gonna say it to camera, is it okay to say that generally in my experience, it does seem to boil down to somebody becomes a more, more male energy role and somebody becomes a more female energy role, whether they're male or female or not. And that could be said to be something like a bit more dominant and a bit more passive or a bit attributes that are generally associated with a particular gender, but it does seem to me in my own personal experience, and I'm only talking from that, that it seems to be very often the case in same-sex relationships that something becomes male-female energy that is not necessarily anything to do with gender. But doesn't that come down to gender being performed, that they're performing to what society sees a man and a woman should um, behave and how a man should behave in a relationship and a woman? So they're taking that and they're performing a, t a style of that gender really so they could be more accepted in society. But that might be the case but it's also the case that and this is probably contentious ground and I might regret saying this if you look at nature mm. the way things work is that things fit together they either fit together or they don't if you've got two passive people fitting together, that's a bit tricky. If you've got two dominant people trying to fit together, it's a bit tricky. Something needs something needs to fit. Now, I don't know whether that's right or wrong or not, but no, that, but that isn't really anything to do with other people's opinions or associations of what you think should or shouldn't work. It's to do with some kind of dynamic that works or doesn't do you work. Do think that comes down to gender? <coughs> if gender's performed, then surely two females or two males can work with the idea of the more masculine and the more feminine. If, it, if that's how it's meant to fit together then... Well I'm looking at it in terms of energetics. Male energy is an energy that initiates, that m pushes things forward and is proactive. Female energy is receptive and encompassing. That's the way that nature works. So if you, we are on some level just animals. Mm. We are human beings on one level, but we are like animals as well. Mm, sure. So I, I, I don't think we're that different from the rest of nature. I think for things to fit, there needs to be that male energy, which is proactive initiating energy, and the female energy, which is kind of receptive encompassing. But can't that energy But be I don't think that's necessarily anything to do with gender. It can be, yeah. and traditionally it is, but I don't think they're necessarily the same thing. No. It's easier to perform the traditional gender roles because that's what we're brought up in and society yeah. says. So you don't really have to think about it then. Mm -hmm. But is it better? Oh, that's a whole other question. Because there are animals, um, the females are more dominant and the males are more passive. Like they're more yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's that sexless and live. So it, I think we're very um, developed as a species. I think we 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 have so much to us that has evolved more because we obviously have been the dominant species on the planet. Um, so I think we've evolved so much more and our brains are so much more capable of doing things than some animals, not all. Um, but uh, yeah, I do, I do think, like they say like pigs are the most intelligent animal humans eat <coughs> and they say that they can feel, um, they can feel love, they can feel, because they, not that you can have them as a pet, but they, they can feel all types, types of emotion, they, they can sense death and stuff, but that's regardless of the pig being male or female, they're talking about pigs, so, um... So pause. So now you do what I was asking you to do last week, which is to corral his bag of wasps into... I'm just picking up what No, I know, but ask me a question. Do you think, in terms of our research project, that can gender be abolished is a good question to go forward with, because we've... No, I'm any of them, Or how do we learn gender? And these are the questions 
that we were thinking of asking of asking them then let's see what this seemed like um so what was the very first thing that you remember that i what that you remember oh my lord <laughs> i can't remember last week the very first thing that i remember what in my life i don't know i don't know um is gender an important part of i'll change the question so it makes sense to answer them is gender an important part of your childhood <coughs> well in as much as that <coughs> my mum and dad split up when i was five and i was brought up by my mum and with my sister so i was brought up with two women and my dad was largely absent in my life as an influence so i didn't have a male role model in my life from my dad and so I kind of found that through <coughs> seems it probably seems daft to you to say it but when I started listening to John Peel on the radio at the age of 13 who played all the punk records that I wanted to hear I listened to him two hours a night five days a week for years and years and years I mean he, he, he became my role model and you know I became a radio man and I've become a media man so if you want to look at it in that way you know I, I, I actively sought out a gender role model that I respected and became like that Did it matter that you were a boy or a girl and do you remember the first time someone treated you in a way that was obviously related to your gender? Yeah I do because um, I wasn't a typical boy and at the age of seven I started doing acrobatics which is very tame compared to what people do now it was sort of forward rolls and a bit of pouncing about to music on floor mats but um, Anne Stone, who I ended up doing this acrobatic routine to the whole of the junior school that I was in at, at lunchtime or whatever in this gym, she was she, she was a proper acrobat. You could tell she was going to be like county level performer or whatever. Anyway, she did some head to toe thing, and I, I just had to lie there and hold her while she did something that looked really impressive, and then everybody that was it. And looking back on it now, it was like I was actually quite brave to do that because it definitely wasn't a typical boy thing to do and all my mates were just riding around on bicycles and playing football and I was doing something which now people go, it's a bit gay but nobody said that in those days because that word didn't exist then and people just thought it was quite good and I, I didn't really do it for anybody else I just did it because I thought it was, I don't know I, don't know, did I even know why I did it but then there was a point where a couple of years after that I, d I did realise that all of my lad mates were playing football and climbing around on roofs and cycling about and I was the only lad doing this dance acrobatics class and I didn't think I needed to change for other people but I sort of tweaked it slightly and went back I came off the stage and went backstage and just started doing lights or sound or dressing or props or something but I loved the theatre thing and then so I guess there was something going on from a very early age around gender and representations and looks and then I loved all the glam rock stuff I mean Sweet and T-Rex and Slade were all blokes who had long hair and big boots and outfits and sequins and glamtastic stuff and I loved all that I don't, know, I don't really know why I did but I did and it, it was very male but in a very kind of camp outfit and then the punk thing to me just carried all that on it was always about dressing up then I was a goth and new romantic thing and that was all about dressing up and by that time the straight scene and the gay scene had all mixed together but I always had competitions with my girlfriends of who took longest to get ready for years I'd spend hours doing my hair and my makeup to go out longer than my girlfriends but they were my girlfriends it wasn't a, it wasn't ever a I never questioned my sexuality but in terms of my gender that I was performing it was the same as my girlfriend we had the same big hairstyle the same makeup the same outfits I mean that was quite an interesting time it was I, I don't know I don't really know what that was all about but it was good fun well it's a bit of food for thought yeah